Well, the crowd enjoying uh, the unfolding of these events. A little bit of drama, a few special things going on as well on the track and in the field. I wonder how many of them saw that world record last night. There was a countdown. I think only about 300 people were in the arena for that world record very late last night from Jen Shaw in the vault. But it's the BMW Men's 60 metres final now. And uh, this, again, hard to pick out a favourite. The big names sort of sprinkled through there. But I know in lane six, uh, you're, you're fond of Cherry. Well, he has the fastest qualifying time coming in. And he's been here before. Runner-up in 09 and 2011. And third last year. So you have to think, hey, he is thinking about finally getting that indoor win. He'll also be at the NCAA championship meet for Mississippi State, but because of some complications in terms of how they compete at the indoor level, Mississippi State allows him to run in the pro ranks indoors. Well, he was the fastest in qualifying, D'Angelo Cherry, with 6.60 in his semi-final. His personal best, though, was set back in 2009, what, three years ago, four years ago, and uh, he's still only 22. Yeah, 6.52 is quality running. Anything close to 6.50. The world leader is Jimmy Vico of France running 6.48 just this weekend. I think that's safe, but as we know, the altitude here at Albuquerque should help these times. I expect to at least see a sub 6.60 clocking. Well, expect the unexpected. I think that's been the, uh, one of the tales of today with the various falls and injuries going on. But... Uh, the athletes are ready, the crowd are ready, we need them to be brought to silence. Keith Ricks goes in one, Nigel Tolton in two, Jeremy Dodson in three, set a PR in his semi-final of 6-6-3. Shane Crawford goes in four, close to his personal best in his semi-final. Cordero Gray in five, D'Angelo Cherry, Atto's pick, goes in lane six. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Reggie Dixon goes in seven, and Ramonte McLean goes in lane eight. Fastest. By an American this year, 6.50 by, by Davis, Doc Patton. Seven. Well, away they go, good start there from D'Angelo Cherry, third from left on the near side, it's about the smallest man in the race, but he's winning it comfortably, second there right behind. Oh, Monty McLean, I think, or was it Reggie Dixon in second place? And the time, 6.48, that equals the fastest time in the world this year, we said, Maybe we'll get something unexpected, and we have an Atto. I think you said we're not really expecting that sort of time, didn't you? Well, how about 6.49? It's been rounded up, oh. <laughs> allowing me to save face. But nonetheless, what a huge breakthrough race for the young man from Mississippi State. 6.49. That is some serious running, the second fastest time in the world. A huge personal best. And here's the thing, Tim. I thought he stood up a little soon. There he is in six. And look at his start, not a whole lot of dry face here. You see, at this point, you want to remain a little bit lower in terms of your angle. He came up, but so smooth in the final half of this 60 meters. There's D'Angelo Cherry, third from the left. And this was absolutely a breakthrough race, 6.49. And he now will head to the NCAA championships as the favorite. Well, I was querying why he was had his <laughs> PR at the age of 18 four years ago. He's just smashed it, 6.49. Anything under 6.50 is special, and Lewis is with a special man. All right, thanks very much. Well, D'Angelo, after the race, you saw the time when you dropped to the track. What were you thinking? Uh, it was an amazing time because I haven't ran under, I haven't ran 6.52 since 2009. I've been dealing with injuries, so come out here and, and run an amazing time on this track. I'm just... I'm just in shock right now, really. Did you have any sense that maybe being at altitude on, on, on what we know is a fast track, that something special might happen? Oh, uh, I really wasn't expecting too much based off last year. But um, considering it's at altitude, I know the time will be fast as long as I go through my phase and ex execute my race. And after your experiences at the Indoor Nationals, to come here and win with that big time, still looking at the NCAA Indoor Championships, what does this do for you confidence-wise for your career? Uh, it gives me great confidence because this is my last um, chance to win nationals indoors. I don't have an outdoor for Mississippi State. So after, uh, it just gives me a lot of confidence going to NCAAs and getting on the pro circuit for outdoors. So. All right, well, congratulations. I noticed you were holding on to this tape. I guess you want to take, keep this as a souvenir, huh? I will. Okay. There you go, Tim. He's got a souvenir for his fast time. <laughs> That's unique. I've never been seen an athlete be offered the finishing tape before. Cherry is the fastest man in the USA this winter. 6.49 there for D'Angelo Cherry. Dixon and Dodson bringing up the rear. Hurdles next.